Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Library, where Star Wars is in print, the Force is with the readers, and we again return to 1979 and the newspaper strips. As always, I'm your host Nathan P. Butler, and you may recall that when taking a look at Gambler's World, the story that ran from March until September of 1979 in the newspaper strips by Russ Manning, that I mentioned how that story actually only ran Monday through Saturday of each week. They set aside Sunday to tell other stories, presumably because there were a lot of people who only subscribed to Sunday newspapers rather than subscribing to the entire week worth. The first of those stories that ran from March until July of 1979, also by Russ Manning, was a story entitled The Constancia Affair. Now, this was not reprinted in classic Star Wars The Early Adventures as most of the Russ Manning strips were. Instead, it has seen reprinting but it took a while for us to eventually get there. Classic Star Wars The Early Adventures was released in 1994, which is quite a while from 1979 when it was first released as these newspaper strips. But Dark Horse Comics did put together most of the Manning strips for Classic Star Wars The Early Adventures in 94. Four years later, in 1998, we finally, finally got to see the Constancia Affair collected in a similar but uh, more lackluster sort of way, not a lot of uh, tweaks to the artwork or anything like that in a special comic book that many folks haven't had a chance to check out for themselves. It is the Kenner Star Wars special, The Constancia Affair. There was an exclusive release through, of all places, KB Toys. Okay? So we did get a release of The Constancia Affair, and very much like you know, classic Star Wars Early Adventures, it just takes the comic strip uh, uh, panels, takes the panels, lays them out, usually just two beside each other, three beside each other sometimes to make up one larger story. They do sometimes have these larger images, but bear in mind that at the time you got sort of larger chunks in the Star Wars newspaper strips on Sundays than you did on the other days of the week. Constancia Affair is a very, very short little story here. So the general gist of the story is this. The Empire has discovered that the residents of the planet Constancia are telepaths. They want them to use their telepathy only for Imperial ends. So now the Rebels need to save Constancia to make sure that they can't use it for the Empire and that the people of Constancia are not going to be essentially enslaved. To do this, Luke has already gone off on a mission and he is with uh, Gamine, this little kind of elvish type character down here you see at the bottom talking to Han there. And he is also working with another rebel agent named Charlie, this blonde woman here. Han, on the other hand, and Chewbacca are also on the way. Now, the droids are with them, but the droids had to be jettisoned briefly. Fortunately, Luke does get them back. But Han and Chewbacca, thank goodness, looking like Chewbacca, finally, instead of a hippie with a bad hair day, are there with another character named Gyla, who is an interest and a friend of Hans. So they are going to essentially Luke's aid, and our characters wind up working together to try to save Constancia. At one point, Han and Charlie have to wear these essentially suits that look like battle droids, but they're really essentially armored suits, and they go up against the Imperials to steal an Imperial ship to fight off the other Imperials from this sort of uh, asteroid uh, base that is within sort of frozen asteroid type of structure here. Now, interestingly enough, what is coming after them here? Essentially, TIE fighters, TIE advanced or TIE bombers, as we see in this particular case. That's what they're fighting aboard. Wait, what? Yes, this is the cockpit. Wait, what? There, it, that's, that's a TIE fighter win... What? Yeah, this is another instance like we saw in the pizzazz strips where it, they make it out to be that these TIE fighters are freaking huge compared to what they actually are in the rest of the EU. So they're able to not only get aboard and fight a group of Imperials aboard this TIE fighter, basically this TIE bomber, and then they wind up taking it over and then fly it as if it is like this huge, almost quasi-capital ship against the other Imperials. It doesn't make a whole lot of logical sense, but you can just assume it's some type of oddball TIE fighter. Oddly enough, having it show up in here like that actually makes it kind of make sense to show up elsewhere like that, because at least there is precedent for it, albeit not very strong precedent for it. In any event, they wind up saving the day. Constantia itself is saved. They're all going to be heroes. There is not much to this story. It is fast. It's kind of one of those blink-and-you'll-miss-it type of tales without a whole lot of interest in it, and these characters, Charlie and Gyla, wind up kind of showing up out of nowhere, and you're kind of sitting there scratching your head going, who are these people, and why are they in this story? 
They're there just because they need other rebel characters to aid, even though they don't really need need them. They just kind of apparently thought they needed them. It's an oddly done story. This is not Russ Manning at his best. I can see why they might have chosen to leave this out of the early adventures. The rest of the early adventures aren't that much better either, quite frankly. So, the Constancia Affair. Is it essential and can it be skipped? Well, yes, it can be skipped. No, it's not essential. But I would say that for a collector, given that the only place this was reprinted as a single issue here is somewhat hard to find, this may be something for collectors to put on their wish list to try to hunt down, especially if you already have the rest of the early adventures to put this in there with it. So it's an interesting find, a fun thing to look for, a fun thing to hunt down, but it is not essential by any means and can be skipped without really giving a crap, quite frankly. So not a great story, but at least an oddball in terms of how it was collected to make collectors be a little bit interested in this story that otherwise shouldn't get much interest, frankly, at all. But it's not the weirdest thing to come from classic Star Wars The Early Adventures. We'll see that coming up with a story entitled The Kashyyyk Depths that was never collected at all. Until next episode, thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the readers.